Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to talk to you about is what is called the ambiguous case for the sine rule. It occurs when you are asked to find an angle given two sides and another angle, which is not the included angle, you'll find that more than one triangle can be drawn. I'll show you in this example here. Suppose we're given one side of a triangle and we're told it's four centimeters and the opposite angle is 30 degrees. And we've got another side which is of length six centimeters. And what we've got to do is find the remaining two angles. Now if I was to draw this triangle, let's suppose I start with say a baseline. Let's just draw a line, something like that. And then I've got to have another side which is of length six centimeters and the angle opposite the four centimeter side has got to be 30 degrees. So that would mean that if I was to draw this, let's say this is the side that is of length six centimeters and from here down to here is four centimeters. So this opposite angle will be 30 degrees. Now when it comes to drawing the side that's four centimeters in. If I was to go to the end here and get a compass, say, so I put the point in here, set the distance to four centimeters, and then draw an arc. And I would find that I would get an arc cutting through this line, something like this, okay? And then it would come round like so. So there's gonna be two positions that I can have a length of four centimeters. There's this one that would be four centimeters and there's also this one here. Let's just mark that in too as being four centimeters. So that means that there's two triangles that can be drawn that satisfy these conditions where we've got a side of four centimeters, opposite angle is 30 degrees, and another side, and we haven't got an included angle. Remember, an included angle would be an angle between two given sides. That would be this angle here. We're not given it. And if that's the case, we get this ambiguous case where we can draw two triangles. So we've got to find the remaining two angles. So let's say that this angle we call theta, in that position and this angle up here we'll call alpha and we'll have this as triangle one and we'll have this one as triangle two now in order to find the angle theta we can use the sine rule and if we do that we're going to have for each of these triangles it's going to be exactly the same that is sine of angle theta divided by the opposite side which is six is equal to the sine of the given angle here, 30 degrees, divided by its opposite side, which in each triangle is going to be the four centimeters. Okay, so we've got four there. And rearranging this for sine theta, we end up with sine theta equaling six times sine of 30 degrees, and that's all divided by four. And if you work this out on your calculator, you find that you get 0.75. So therefore, angle theta will be the inverse sine of 0.75. So just border that off there. Now you can see we've got two possible values for theta between 0 and 180 degrees. So what I'm going to do here is just sketch the sine graph for angles between 0 and 180 degrees. So just put that there. We'll call that theta there. And remember the sine graph between 0 and 180 degrees would rise up to one there at 90 degrees and drop back down to 180 degrees there. So at the top here, it would be one and we've got a value of 0.75. So let's just take that point there as being, say, at 0.75. Just 
just squeeze that in there. Now, if I project across there like that, then we're interested at the two points here where that dotted line intersects the red curve. And by symmetry, this distance must be the same as this distance. Now, if you take the inverse sine of 0 0.75, assuming you're working in degrees mode on your calculator, you'll find the value that you get, which will be this value for theta, turns out to be 48.5 and so on degrees. And if I take this away from 180 degrees, I'll get this possible value for theta, which turns out to be 131.40 and so on degrees. So if I'm considering triangle 1, let's just put here for 1, then theta equals this acute angle. And if I round that to, say, the nearest degree, that's going to be 49 degrees to nearest degree, okay, or to two significant figures. And if that's the case, knowing that all three angles should add up to 180 degrees, it turns out that alpha will be equal to 101 degrees, and that's to the nearest degree, or in this case, three significant figures. And if I look towards triangle 2, let's just put for 2, then the angle theta here is 131.40 and so on degrees. If I round this to the nearest degree, then theta is going to be 131 degrees. I'll just put that to three significant figures. Also, knowing that the angles add up to 180 degrees, then we therefore get that alpha will equal 19 degrees to the nearest degree, or in this case, two significant figures. Okay, so I hope that's given you some idea then on how to handle this ambiguous case for the sine rule.